Hello everyone. I'm very excited and honored to be here at the 2021 Women in Data Science Conference. I'm Dina and I'm going to present the work that I'm doing in Tanzania. Small scale farming, which means crop farming and livestock farming is very crucial in developing world. It supports over 380 uh, million households and 70% uh, of the food production in uh, the developing world is from the small scale farmers. Therefore, addressing the challenges they face is very crucial. So our talk, the talk today, I will cover uh, these items, mainly um, the motivation for using deep learning in agriculture in this, in the context of developing countries with a focus on poultry. And then we'll, I will cover in detail the application of CNN in poultry diseases diagnostics, focusing on what we have done on the ground until today and the next steps. So really addressing the poultry challenges, the challenges of poultry farmers, which is mainly diseases, will contribute positively on the second SDG on zero hunger. The population in Tanzania is about 56 million, and we have over 4.6 million households depending on chickens for a living, food as well as the economy, economic, um, how, how economic uh, income of the household. This is about 27 million uh, people. Currently, chicken diseases monitoring is mainly done in the lab and it takes about three to four days to get the results. Access to the lab services is really limited to many farmers and is also expensive. So currently what is mainly done is using clinical science and to predict the diseases which, uh, have, which the poultry faces. The productivity is really hampered by the Salmonella, New, Newcastle disease, and coccidiosis. Therefore, as a, a data scientist, I was really motivated to extend the use of the most ubiquitous item in our context, which is the cell phone, to address the challenge on poultry diseases diagnostics. And um, the kind of data set that we really see applicable in our context is uh, images. And this is due to the fact that we have low levels of literacy and multiple languages. So really we see images being a universal data format in our context. And this really brings us to convolutional neural networks for poultry diseases diagnostics. The main task at hand is whether we can train a model that can correctly classify a set of diseases for a set of disease, a set can classify a set of images for chicken diseases. These, these three images here represent chickens and two of them are diseased and they're different kind of diseases. Now, we really aim after training our model to return the correct label for each, for each image. And um, this brings us to the power of uh, CNN, and, uh, which involves a very crucial stage of convolution, which basically is uh, the operation of filter, of introducing a filter K onto a patch of the image xi and to produce an output feature map which is a different representation of the main image each element on the output feature map represents a neuron and the neuron is actually a result of the dot product of the patch of the input image 
and the filter K, which moves across the image to produce the neurons. And uh, the power of the neural networks, a lot of them take place, uh, the convolution takes place on the whole image and the image is normally very large, which is, if it's three dimensional, is uh, even large. But the power of um, convolutional neural networks lies on the hidden layers that after the convolution has taken place, you have multiple representations of the input image. And therefore, at the fully connected layer stage, you are able to make a decision of whether the chicken is diseased or healthy. And I'd really like to acknowledge the work of Chris Sola, which really shows the visualization of what the hidden layer sees. It's it sees the different uh, patterns of the input image, uh, which the human eye might miss, which really brings the power of uh, convolutional neural networks. And uh, when making decisions, you look at the activation functions with the different magnitudes of the convolution that took place from the dot product of the input image and the convolution filter. So you are able to make a decision and obtain a classified image representing the classified, the required class of the, of the input image. And this brings us now to how we apply this knowledge of deep learning on solving a real uh, world problem of uh, detecting the chicken disease. So the first and second stage, which is the generating the data set, the training and testing data set, and uh, annotating it with the help of an agriculture expert. That is the first and second stage. And then on the third stage of this workflow is the modeling part and deployment, which we aim to be on mobile phones. So the first stage of collecting the data set is really, uh, or generating the data set is really labor intensive and uh, time consuming, and it's really an undermined task. So there's a lot of work that goes into generating the data set before the actual modeling can start. We have used the open data kit tool uh, to collect the data set and each image is timestamped and geocoded. We have collected the GPS uh, points for every image in we, we, where we aim to develop a map that would be used in future for predicting areas susceptible for outbreaks of the, of the poultry diseases. So we inoculate for Salmonella, the healthy and coccidiosis classes were collected from the farmers. So we have to monitor the progress of these diseases after the inoculation. And uh, ethically, we have to dispose the diseased chickens properly to prevent the spread of disease to other poultry farms. And uh, we have managed until today to collect a data set of 6,000 436 images of chicken droppings, which is our, which is our data set, and it is hosted on Zenodo, freely open to the research community. And we have seen, we can see the distinct uh, images of healthy coccidiosis and salmonella. Uh, when a chicken is infected with coccidiosis, the chicken dropping is brownish, predominantly brown in color. For salmonella, it is white, loose, and it's predominantly white and loose. For a healthy chicken, the dropping is solid. So when we move on to our third work step, which is modeling, we have completed the data, generating the data set, and now we have embarked on the modeling phase uh, on the initial stages, or we are on the initial stages of the modeling. And uh, the baseline model that we've managed to produce, uh, to, to, to train, has a 90% uh, accuracy on uh, two-block VGG. 
And um, we have also started training, we've trained on uh, ResNet 50 for the three, for the three diseases, uh, for the two diseases, coccidiosis and salmonella, and for the healthy class. And we have an accuracy of 96%. So really it was a proof of concept that is our data set working, which is really brought excitement to, to the team that we are on the right track. And uh, we aim to deploy the right model after we've completed uh, the modeling, we really aim to deploy it as a mobile application uh, and uh, it will be definitely, access will be free and we'll, we'll train the farmers on how to use uh, the app and we'll set the model on the mobile to allow usage offline and we'll definitely be updating it uh, regularly. So it is really our vision that we'll have um, a mobile app that uh, for early detection of coccidiosis, salmonella and Newcastle poultry diseases and that farmers and livestock officers using our, our app will have reduced outbreak of these diseases at their farms. And we are on final stages of uh, finalizing the data sheets for data sets for, this, for the data set that we currently have available. I really want to thank uh, the funders for their great support in this project. Uh, the work is funded by the Organization for Women in Science for the Developing World through the Early Career Fellowship Program. And I equally acknowledge uh, the deep learning in DABA through the Indaba X AI for Development Innovation Grant for funding uh, this project. Data collection is very expensive besides being labor intensive and, uh, and, um, and time consuming, it is equally expensive. That's why I really acknowledge uh, the two funders on this project. I equally acknowledge the collaborators on this work as in the NEMA, the Delta Analytics Teaching Fellowship Program and uh, the Mechanism Design for Social Code, uh, the Development Working Group for their very constructive uh, contribution, as well as support in moving forward the work. I've shared here my email contact. Please, let's stay in, in touch. We are really uh, open to collaborators and uh, more ideas to have great impact on this work. Thank you. Uh -huh.